Hello and welcome to a new little series we're going to be doing um, about the BMW B58 engine. So, if you don't know what this is, this is an engine that's found in quite a lot of BMWs, generally ending with um, 40i on the end, so M140, M240, 340, 440. Um, also, a slightly different version to this one, but it's also found in the Toyota Supra. Um, so quite a big deal, this engine's already getting some pretty massive support in the aftermarket um, and examples of these have seen over a thousand horsepower, so really impressive engine um, and it's impressive from the off, not just from you know a, a modified point of view, um, the standard internals and everything will take a hell of a lot of abuse. Um, so it's basically an aftermarket dream, it's a bit like, dare I say it, um, what could be the modern 2JZ. Um, but to have a look at it, it's a little bit different to most BMW engines and certainly its predecessors. So uh, first things first, you'll notice there's no timing chain at the front, that's now at the back. Um, it's also an 82 mil bore, which is quite unusual. Generally BMWs are 84 and have been lately or larger. Um, but in, in this sort of shape and size normally, normally 84, this is 82 and it's got a 94.6 mil stroke. So it's a really long stroke, which is why these seem to be really good at making a hell of a lot of torque. Um, and it's also 11 to one compression ratio, which is really high for a turbo engine. Um, but thanks to direct injection and, and some pretty clever management, um, they get away with it. And uh, the advantage of that is some really good performance and also really good efficiency. Um, the other big thing about these is weight. Um, you compare this to an S54 or any BMW iron block, and this is actually a hell of a lot lighter. Um, so 139 kilos is the book figure for a B58, which really is nothing considering, you know, getting sort of five, 500 horsepower or more out of these is no problem whatsoever. Um, they run a single twin scroll turbo, um, and they've got quite a cool intake manifold. Um, so rather than running a, an intercooler or anything like that, they've actually got a charge cooler within the intake manifold. Um, which means they can have a really short intake tract um, and really good cooling efficiency. And the result is that they're really responsive. Um, so what we're gonna do is we've got this one here, which we bought some time ago. It's been sat in storage, hence everything's a little bit dusty, but we're gonna get Matt to strip it down. We're gonna have a look at all the internals, see how we can improve it um, and how we can build this into an even better engine for some big power. So Matt's just finished stripping the engine down. Um, obviously we knew a fair bit about these before stripping it down, but it's quite nice to see all the little details that um, other videos don't mention. Um, also to take it apart to the level that many places don't. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate thing with many modern engines that um, companies will just drop in a, a rod and piston um, combo, which isn't really the right way of doing things. If you're gonna blueprint an engine, you wanna have it right apart and you measure everything, um, including main bearings, which don't get covered um, if you're just dropping bits in. Um, but yeah, some of the standout features of it, uh, it's quite nice to see main caps back. So um, clever though it, it was, uh, the N54, um, in fact, any N engine, um, but you know, the ones we see, N54, N55, S55, got a split crankcase whereas this goes back to having main caps um, so an iron main cap uh, aluminium block and um, they've got some quite interesting detail on the bottom um, so they've got little teeth that dig into grooves on the block to locate them um, this one had a little extra feature um, which was the fact this piston number one it's got a huge chunk out of it um, from detonation due to we believe poor mapping um, but actually Amazingly, that seems to be the only damage, nothing else has taken a hit. 
Um, the crank looks great. Um, another little feature, A, these don't weigh a lot, which is quite interesting. Um, quite a beefy rod, and um, they've got a coated upper big end bearing. Um, that is due to start-stop, um, which basically it really isn't good for the engine, so that coating there is to protect the bearing from uh, essentially being started and stopped all the time. Um, oil pump's quite a beefy unit. Um, and then the other, other interesting feature really is, is this girdle along the bottom, um, which bolts to the block and also to the main cap, so it really stiffens up the block, um, which is why I can take so, so much abuse by the looks of things. Um, other than that, all came apart nice and easy. Make sure you tune in next time. Uh, we'll be following the build of this engine. We'll get everything cleaned, measured, and see what we're dealing with, and then work on a bit of a parts list and building it back up to handle even more power and showing you exactly what we do to achieve that. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, especially subscribing, because then you can't miss the next video. And we'll see you next time.